Um, when we look at our lives and we, if we recount the way that our lives have gone, if it was like a like a graph, it would just kind of go <laughs> like off the chart. Uh, in in really very recent years, um, for our states of mind, it's it's been a, an exponential change, and that's what the hopeful aspect of all this is. It's it's very exponential. The world would have you believe it's you know it's very very slow, and you can even get quotes from the course about you know millions of years and perhaps longer than it took for the separation to occur. And those are metaphors, kind of like God weeps. You know, you can find anything you want in the book. But I think our experience, and, and what I want to share is, it's a very hopeful, joyful experience. Like if you really do take to this in a very sincere way, uh, you can actually have a huge shift in consciousness. Things, things can happen and you can experience things that you would never have imagined. You know, you rolled the clock back like 20 years on either of us, and you know, we, if somebody had showed us a video of, of our lives, we both would have just laughed. There was a lot of shyness, we had a lot of parallels, we were both very shy. We, we would have just, I mean, I would have either said, if somebody showed me a video of how my life has gone in the last 20 years, I would, have, I would have just laughed and said, you're crazy, that's ridiculous. Or I would have just been in total disbelief, saying, no, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong about that. that. That could never happen. I don't know who that is on there. It has a resemblance, but it's not me. And so, in one sense, you become a living demonstration of what's possible. And isn't that wonderful? To teach is to demonstrate. You know, and when we say we're having a lot of fun, we're not kidding. <laughs> we're sincere about that. We really are having a lot of fun. So, <coughs> To me, this is why it's encouraging. I'm happy when somebody meets me and they say, wow, that, that, that had a ma major impact on my life, or it really turned my life around, or they, they, I hear a lot of those kind of witnesses and stories. And it's the Holy Spirit, you know, it's not David. It's, there's no person doing anything here. It's just the Holy Spirit. And I'm just, my mind is calling forth witnesses, and we get a bunch of witnesses. And that's exactly how it works. The Holy Spirit has a major convincing job to do, to convince you that you're whole and complete, instead of uh, separate and unworthy and, and, you know, weak. And, you know, it's just a major convincing job. But when people would ask me, like, well, how do you do that? I said, well, I just, I kept coming to the table with a little willingness and letting that little willingness meet with the, the glorious magnitude and the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the way that it worked for me. It wasn't like uh, I could look back and write a memoir and say, well, I made some good moves here and, and made some good investments here and there. It was more like I started surrendering and yielding and listening more and more and more and following. And that was, that made the whole difference. Wouldn't it be funny if you wrote your memoirs and then you were accused of plagiarism? <laughs> that would be that would be a real funny situation. <laughs> Plagiarizing your own memoirs. That's yeah, amazing. Uh, if you told me twenty years ago that what was gonna happen in my life was about to happen, I would have been so joyous. You know? Now, in truth, a lot of it has been like a major pain in the ass. But if you told me 20 years ago that that was going to happen, I would have been jumping up and down for joy. That's the way that I should be now. So I try to remember that. I try to remember, yeah, yeah, it is a pain in the ass. But, it's great. You know, it's like you would be beside yourself if you realized what was going to happen in your life. So it's, it's kind of like that duality, kind of like that, uh, you know, good and bad thing going on. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to mention that because Oh, I, mean, I never could have seen this coming. I never could have seen any of this coming. And I wouldn't have believed it either. And, uh, you know, for people to come up to me and say, oh, you know, like David was telling a story about all these different versions of, uh, you know, how people had a course of miracles and went through all the stages of their houses and all this, you know, things, and nobody ever really reads it. And it just sits there on the bookshelf. There have been thousands of people who have told me, 
Yeah, I tried to read the course, didn't make any sense, read the discourse of the universe, it started to make sense to me, and they go back to the course and they start to get excited about it. Well, I was lucky in the sense that it was that way for me right from the beginning. Because the first time that I ever picked up the course and read it, it might as well have been written in a foreign language. It just made no sense whatsoever. And then art and person appeared to me seven or eight times. And this is where people, they really don't get it uh, about art and person. There's no way that I could have ever written the book, The Disappearance of the Universe. It, it just would be impossible. My contribution to the book is that I carry on my end of the conversation and I insert notes that tell people what was going on for me and my narration tells people what was going on for me at that point in my life. That's how you can tell that it has a timeline, it has a real story behind it. And uh, that's really my contribution. But when it comes to clarifying the course, that wasn't my contribution and there's no way that I could have done that. So they started explaining the course to me and then after seven or eight visits, I went back and read the course again, this thing that made no sense whatsoever. And I started to read it and I could look at it and I say, wow, it does say that. It does mean that. You know, and it started to actually make sense to me. And when I saw that, that's when I started to get excited about what I was doing. Because I realized, no, if you can do that for me, then it's probably going to be able to do the same thing for other people. So it's like all of a sudden, okay, I realized that I was onto something. That I was participating in something that was really interesting. And that's when I started to trust art in person a little bit more was when I realized that what they were doing was actually working for me. And I think that people, you know, they, they start to trust the Holy Spirit when they realize that what the Holy Spirit is doing for them is working. You know, it, I don't think that it's a blind faith. I've said this in workshops before, but uh, I don't think that it's a blind kind of a faith. I think that the faith of the Holy Spirit is something that the Holy Spirit earns by actually making things work for us, and by actually leading us in the right direction, if we're willing to listen. It's like the Course says, and Mary Baker Eddy also said, uh, you know, everyone is called, but few choose to listen. And by the way, Jesus mentions a couple of uh, quotations from Mary Baker Eddy's uh, Science and Health, which was published exactly 100 years before A Course in Miracles. And Mary Baker Eddy's Science and Health 1876, Course in Miracles, 1976. And Jesus is kind of like tipping his hat to Mary Baker Eddy by using a couple of things that she did in that book. And he's not a plagiarist, by the way. He's just repeating a couple of uh, really interesting ideas. For example, uh, it was Mary Baker Eddy who I believe first pointed out that the Bible says that a deep sleep fell upon Adam. And nowhere is there any reference to him waking up. I think Mary Baker Eddy was the first one to point that out. And so Adam fell asleep. He's sleeping. There's a dream. The Bible never says that he woke up. You know, and of course, the Bible also mentions that. But there's no reference you know, to Adam ever waking up. Well, our job is to wake up. And the way that you awaken is through forgiveness. It's like uh, the Course says right in the preface. Forgiveness is the way that we will remember. You know, and uh, that's how you do it. And if you practice forgiveness, eventually you will remember God, you will wake up, and you'll be home. And that's when you'll realize that you never left.